So what I wanted to do now is to move on through Aristotelianism, uh, Aristotle's uh, thoughts on physics and metaphysics. And we got to substance, and I, I remembered what I wanted to, to do at the end of the section on sub substance. So let me do that first, and then uh, we'll move a little further down into the, the outline. Uh, <clears throat> So as I was saying, a thing that exists in the world, according to Aristotle, has two aspects. It has a material aspect and a formal aspect. They're, it's composed of matter and form. Uh, but we don't, uh, I, I think that word aspects is better than thinking of these aspects as objects in and of themselves, because as Aristotle argues, you, you can't have something that exists that is just formal or that is just material. It has to have both aspects in order to exist. Okay. Um, and so uh, I want to sort of develop an example which at some level is going to be an analogy, but then eventually I'll try to strip off the layers so that we get down to actually what Aristotle is, is saying, because um, often these things are, uh, are explained in terms of a, an analogy, and I'll show you kind of the standard analogy, um, but uh, I want to use a slightly different analogy, but then that analogy, I hope, will actually capture uh, specifically and not in just an analogy um, what, what uh, Aristotle is talking about. So the example is this. Um, think of uh, a gingerbread cookie. So and we could even... We could uh, show you some images here, All right? So you know we have gingerbread cookies. They're uh, very popular at Christmas time, so. Now we're starting to think about Christmas, and let's suppose that, uh, uh, you know, my, my daughter goes over to her grandma's house and they, they bake some gingerbread cookies, and now this gingerbread cookie has uh, a material cause and a formal cause, uh, and if we think about, you know, even like just a bare <laughs> cookie like like this one here with no decorating decoration on top like that's really what I'm sort of thinking of is just at that level uh, in, an, in an analogy to what Aristotle is talking about the the material cause is the gingerbread dough and the formal or, or the, the material is the gingerbread dough, and the form is the gingerbread man shape. So that, that little cutout uh, of, a, of a person, uh, that is the form. Okay, so the, the matter is, is, is the the dough that has been cooked, of course, and, and then the form is that that human-like shape. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind, and I'll, I'll try to develop that as we go along. Um, okay, so then that sort of leads right into the, this four causes and the sort of analogy that is typically used. So if we go to the Wikipedia page here, um, they do the standard uh, sort of example. You have a table, okay? The material cause, and, and so now we're talking not, 
not of aspects, but we're really thinking in terms of causation, that something began as one thing, uh, had certain qualities, and those qualities changed over time. And to change those qualities, there had to be some cause, something that caused that to happen. And, um, and, and so with a wood table, a wood table just doesn't appear out of nowhere. It has to be, it has to be transformed from natural sort of materials into this artifact of a table. And so the material cause would be the wood that the table is made out of. The formal cause is the design of the table, the, the shape in which the table is, is in fact made. And the efficient cause is the act of carpentry, of actually chiseling and sanding the wood and and gluing it together and all that sort of stuff. That's, that's the efficient causation is, is the act of carpentry. And then the final cause is that it's used, you know, decoratively in the home or it's used for dining uh, in this example. And so the purpose of the table, why are you making a table? Well, we're going to, we're going to use it for dining purposes. Okay. That gives us some explanation of why the, uh, the wood was transformed into a table. And so that, that final causation is really that, that why and what's the purpose. And Aristotle considers that final causation, looking towards what's the purpose, what's the point, as an explanation of causation. Uh, in the modern conception, especially the way that we're going to use the word modern throughout the rest of this course, um, we don't mean in the 20th century, we mean going back to like the 17th century, the 1600s and, and um, up, you know, through the Industrial Revolution. Um, and maybe even through the 20th century, we think of that as a, a modern period, the modern period of history. And in the modern conception of things, we disregard final causation. And think of that as not, that's not what we mean by a cause. And, uh, even the formal cause, yeah, the table end up, ends up having a shape and a design, but that's not part of the cause, that's the result. You know, that's the way we think in the modern conception. So in the modern conception, formal causation and final causation are, are eliminated. We tend to just think in terms of material uh, cause and efficient cause. And material, like, you know, for a long time at least, it, the way we thought about the material cause was in terms of atoms. So you have atoms and those get arranged into shapes, but, but the shape that they go into is not causing it. What's causing it is the efficient work of other atoms hitting on these atoms. You know, we kind of get down to that level. Um, and, and so now for, for Aristotle, he doesn't think in terms of atoms and and in the early modern period or this really this entire modern period that I was just mentioning that was seen as a big mistake because obviously atoms are real but as we move through the 20th century we found oh but there's subatomic particles and and ultimately what is at the bottom of those atoms is like ah oh, they're energy fields and you know and, and now it starts to get a lot more sophisticated and maybe closer to what Aristotle was talking about. Okay, you know. Um, so uh, this is this picture here is like the standard picture. So 
So that's, that's always a good reference um, to remind yourself, okay, kind of what's going on, but it is a little loose. So for example, with the, the gingerbread uh, cookies, uh, let's say that, let's say that, uh, looking up some pictures here. All right, so let's take a look at this. So um, one thing that we do at Christmas time is, you know, make gingerbread houses. So these gingerbread houses are made out of gingerbread, just like gingerbread cookies, the little human shaped ones. Um, but now we have something that's, uh, you know, a, a little more complicated in terms of its formal cause. And, and so let, let's try to draw this analogy with the table and then with the gingerbread house. The material cause, again, is the, was the baked pieces of gingerbread, but now these baked pieces are going to be like rectangular and, um, you know, maybe some ornamental stuff like, uh, you know, like this, this part over the doorway will be triangular, but we're going to have basically some geometric, uh, basic kind of geometric shapes, and then we stack them up and you know, do the seams with uh, heavy icing and and we get this structure. So the the material cause is the still the gingerbread dough that's been baked. Okay, so we have this baked cookie and that is the material cause of a gingerbread house. The formal cause is is whatever design that is chosen or not, and I don't want to say chosen, uh, I want to say whatever design it actually turns out to be, okay? Um, and then the efficient cause is, is my daughter and her grandma, you know, constructing this thing. Because, you know, and I think of this example because that is something they do. And so, and so that, that artistry of putting these pieces of gingerbread together in just such a way, that's the efficient cause. And then the, the final cause, you know, what's the point of making a gingerbread house? Why are you making a gingerbread house? Ah, because it's fun. It's gonna be a nice decoration. If they make it so it's edible, then, then maybe we'll eat it and it'll taste good, okay. So uh, sometimes the gingerbread houses are not so edible, but in theory, they're supposed to be. Okay. Um, so, you know, those could all be the final causation, that whole group of things. And also a kind of final causation could be the intended design. Okay, maybe my daughter has some, some picture in her head of what she wants the gingerbread house to look like. That'd be like a final cause because that's what she's shooting for. But then, but then the formal cause is the way that it actually turns out, the shape that it actually has. So, um, and, and this is something that, uh, that Aristotle does make some distinction about and, and, and that's, that's important. Um, so, let me try to strip away then what I mean the 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 analogy and get down to the real case that, that, that Aristotle is thinking about. So we have the gingerbread cookie squares, you know, before we start constructing the gingerbread house, we just have like a rectangular shape of gingerbread cookie. Okay, at one level, that is the material cause of the gingerbread house. Uh, but 
Aristotle wants to analyze things down at lower levels and and so the gingerbread didn't just pop out of nowhere just like a gingerbread house didn't just magically appear uh, in in my dining room uh, so too the the rectangular shape of of the rectangular shape of gingerbread, that cookie, that didn't come out of nowhere. It has a material cause, uh, a formal cause, an efficient cause, and a, and a final cause. And so What's the ex explanation of the origin of the rectangular piece of gingerbread cookie? Well, the material cause would be flour, molasses, spices, eggs, and some sugar, something like that. Okay, so those are all the kind of material components. Um, And the formal cause, the form, is that rectangular shape, including the thickness, you know, so we're thinking about the whole three-dimensional shape, not just a two-dimensional shape, the whole complex, precise, geometric, three-dimensional shape that it's in. That's the, the formal cause. And then the efficient cause is, again, the the work of my daughter and her grandma okay but now this work is different instead of being this artistry of constructing a little house it now it's baking All right hey hey you want to go outside come on come on um so we have the material, that's the ingredients. We have the form, which is the shape that it actually comes out to be. We have the efficient cause, which is the baking of it, all, you know, the mixing and, and setting the temperature and putting it in there and all that, that works upon uh, the ingredients. And then the final causation is well, these, these are gonna be components for our gingerbread house. Okay, so this is gonna be one of the pieces for the gingerbread house. And, and that purpose is the final causation. Okay. But then we can still take it down another level, right? Um, so let's say uh, uh, you know, the sugar let's say that we have sugar and it's sugar cane sugar okay sugar cane sugar didn't appear out of nowhere it just didn't it didn't just magically appear it had to be caused to come into that form and and so what is the causation what is the explanation of sugar so the material cause now is going to be uh, the liquid from sugarcane. And the form is going to be the crystalline shape of, and, and now, and, and so this is very important from Aristotle's perspective, notice that now the, the sugar, each individual object, each individual substance is a, a granule a little piece of crystal uh, rock formation of the sugar. Each little speck of sugar is the individual. The, the lump, you know, the heap of sugar is not a substance in and of itself. It doesn't have any coherence. It's, it's just a, an, an aggregate of substances, of individual substances. And this is very important for Aristotle and, and um, 
I don't know if we'll get into that too much in 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 further lectures and everything, but uh, that is something that's very important. Um, and I'll try to allude to it briefly as it comes up. But um, but this this pile of sugar, really, what we're thinking of as the individual substance is just one little granule, one little rock formation that is a unit that it adheres together and it has some kind of unity and structure. And it has a crystalline structure that that is the formal cause. The material cause is the the plant material liquid form that it comes from. And the efficient cause is the work of, you know, uh, taking that um, that liquid from you know the sugar cane and drying it out in the appropriate way whatever the refining process is i'm not too clear on that but, but i imagine it's not too complicated um, and then the final cause is to uh, is to serve as an ingredient in our gingerbread uh, cookie square okay and um, and of course, it, it may have other potential final causation, like like bringing joy or, or, or you know, tasting good or all these sorts of things. But uh, in our specific example, the real final cause, what's actual, actually the final cause, not just potentially what it could be used for, but what it actually serves as a purpose for, is the the making of the gingerbread rectangle. And we could just keep going down and down like that. Um, and, you know, so we could look at the molecular structure of, of the, of an individual grain of, of sugar. We could look, at, you know, beyond its crystalline structure, we could go deeper and we could say, well, it's, it's, it's material cause are these molecules and so on and so forth, right? But it would be the same sort of routine all the way down. And so the question is, okay, well, where does that end? Well, Aristotle doesn't know. Um, and, and that's not his point. He's not trying to get to the end of the story. He's just saying, this is a way of thinking about this. And as I said before, I mean, it's a strange way of looking at things from our perspective, but there doesn't seem to be anything fundamentally wrong with it. It's just like, it's not really what we're interested in, uh, in this modern perspective. But then you never know, maybe as science develops, maybe Aristotelian ideas are gonna come back and have some real leverage in scientific discovery or whatever the case may be. But um, <clears throat> but Aristotelianism does have a bad rap because in the medieval period, the scholastics just thought of Aristotle as just the final word on things. And anybody that disagreed with Aristotle, uh, you know, was just shut out of the conversation. If you had a different way of looking at it, they just didn't want to hear it. And they're, they're, um, you know, it wasn't that you were a heretic, but you know, there was that, that kind of tendency to, to really negate people that didn't uh, look at these things these way, this way. And then often the explanations for real world problems were very grammatical and, and not very satisfying. Okay, and then, and then this dissatisfaction with Aristotelian physics is what led then to the scientific revolution. Uh, but what what the what the early uh, philosophers of the scientific uh, revolution had to do was often they had to they had to think outside of the Aristotelian box, and 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 then of course because there were this thinking out of that Aristotelian box was very successful then Aristotelianism gets this very bad um, uh, rap for being unscientific, okay? 
and, and, and I think we can feel how it's, it is a weird explanation. It's hard to understand, like, how, what is this, okay, maybe you're right about all this stuff, Aristotle, gingerbread, breaking it down, da 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 da. It's an explanation, but what do we do with that explanation? Well, Aristotle's willing to just kind of leave it at that because he's just doing conceptual analysis. And that's often in philosophy, we're not trying to produce results that'll, that'll make us money or you know, solve the world's problems. We're just trying to think things through without making mistakes. And hopefully we make very few mistakes, but of course we always do make some mistakes. And that's what Aristotle's trying to do. Uh, and, and, and as I'm suggesting, I think, you know, he's relatively successful at that. So we don't want to throw this all away. Um, okay, so now physics, that the word physics comes from, uh, we often translate it as nature in English. And uh, nature then in, even in English has the sort of right connotation. So uh, this is a quote from Aristotle. Uh, the, the physis of a thing is a source or cause of being moved, uh, wait, a source or cause of being moved and of being at rest in that to which it belongs primarily. Okay, so, so, uh, The physics or is the nature of the thing. So let's say, let's say that the gingerbread house, okay, same that my daughter's created a nice gingerbread house, uh, but then the roof starts to cave in. Okay, so there begins to get a crack in the roof and it starts to sag in. Okay, what's the explanation? for the roof sagging in? What, why is it behaving in that way? Why is it changing and being modified in that way? And one of the explanations is, well, that's the nature of gingerbread. You know, it's not super stable. It's stable enough, you know, hopefully to get the thing up and going, but after a while it starts to fall apart. That's just the nature of gingerbread. Uh, and it all has to do with all these levels of matter form uh, and efficient causation that we've already dis discussed, especially the, the matter and the form. Um, so I would say that what he's saying is that the nature of an individual substance determines the changes that can develop within the substance. So if we think about that rectangle of gingerbread, there are certain things that will happen to this. Some of them are merely possible, but some things are impossible, okay? Um, you know, uh, the uh, gingerbread is not going to survive in, in a fireplace for very long, right? That's impossible, that's not part of its nature. Um, but part of its nature is that if you, you know suspend it on both ends after a while it's going to start to sag and then probably crack and totally crumble apart and that's just part of its nature okay so that that's good um and then potentiality and actuality is okay think of all the possible changes that gingerbread can undergo that's that's potentiality of gingerbread you know who uh, Whoever made gingerbread in the first place, did they think, oh, I'm going to make a house out of this? Uh, maybe not. Maybe that wasn't part of the final causation. But then, because of the nature of gingerbread, somebody said, hey, we could use gingerbread. And gingerbread just naturally has the right sort of stiffness and, uh, you know, to actually make a structure like a gingerbread house as part of its nature. Uh, but, you know, part of his nature is also is to taste good, is, is to make you want more of it and eat it. Um, and so 
all of those are potentialities, but when you actually make a gingerbread house, that's what the actuality, the actualization, the realization of its nature. And, um, and I should mention too, and the reason why I wanted to use gingerbread is, is to say that, uh, you know, one potentiality of gingerbread is that I'm going to eat it and it's going to taste good and I'm going to like it and I'm going to eat some more. And now think about what happens when I eat the gingerbread. I eat the gingerbread, it goes into my body, my body metabolizes the gingerbread, it undergoes change, and you know it becomes part of my body. And so Aristotle's interested in that. Oh, well, how does that work? And that's why he does gravitate towards this notion of matter. He's like, well, the matter. That's like the part that is still in my body. Like I eat the cookie and of course part of it comes out, but not all of it comes out of my body. Part of it is still in there. And that part is the matter, but the form is totally different. In fact, the form has now become human body stuff, like human organs. And that's quite different from gingerbread. The form is radically different. But nonetheless, we want to say, well, there's some material that is nonetheless stable through that process. But you can't just have the material by itself. It has to have some shape and some qualities. But to go from being gingerbread to being a human organ, uh, that's almost like they're not even the same thing anymore, but there is something that is the same throughout. You know, so Aristotle was just working this out, you know, piece by piece uh, at these uh, fundamental conceptual levels. So that's what we're talking about here. Okay. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do another video to do metaphysics.